welcome back to the NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we introduced the labels for the vertices of the best response polyhedron and corresponding normalized uh, polytope. So, and we stated also one lemma without a proof, we will get back to that lemma and we continue discussing the lemke hausen algorithm. So, the lemma is the following thing, in a non-degenerate game, for a pair of extreme points, x comma y, we have the size of the labels of x is m and size of the labels of y is n. So, let us look at the proof. So, we assume the game to be non-degenerate, game is non-degenerate. Therefore, support of x bar. Let me recall x is basically an extreme point of the polytope and x bar is the corresponding scaled vector which is a probability vector which corresponds to an equilibrium mixed strategy. So, this x bar is basically x bar is nothing but the normalized vector of x. So, support of x bar okay. this many pure strategies can be best response to x bar. So, x bar can have at the most sub of x bar pure strategies ok. And similarly, at most support of y bar pure strategies can be best response to y bar. So, now if we use this fact here, then what we can get is the size of L x has to be less than or equals to the size of S 1 minus support of x this one plus size of the support of x. So, this is nothing but m. Similarly, the size of L y has to be less than or equal to the size of S 2 minus support of y plus the size of the support of y, this is nothing but n. So, therefore, the labels of x can be at most m, labels of y can be at most n. But we have these polytopes are full dimensions and x, y is vertex or extreme points. Therefore, mod L x has to be greater than equals to m and mod L y greater than equals to n which immediately implies mod L x is m mod L y is n. So, the sizes of this labels has are exactly m and n. So, this proves the lemma. Now, let us look at the next thing. It's theorem which says that 
a pair of extreme points x y of this polytope P 1 cross P 2 minus 0 0 is fully labeled if and only if the corresponding norm corresponding normalized vector x bar y bar is a Nash equilibrium. So, the let us look at the proof of this fact. So, x y is a extreme point let us say let x comma y in P 1 cross P 2 minus singleton 0 0 is fully labeled. Let us assume this is fully labeled. Let T 1 is equals to the support of x, T 2 is equals to support of y. So, what we need to show is that this x y is going to be an equilibrium. So, let us prove this fact. Uh, so, let us go to the next. For every k in T 1, so x does not have label k as x k greater than 0. Therefore, if x does not have this label k, this immediately implies y must have label k. This implies a y k must be 1. Therefore, a y bar k has to be 1 over y transpose. Okay. For this k, a y bar, the kth entry of that, that must be 1 by y transpose 1. This is basically the, we have introduced, this is the dot product between y and this vector of 1s. Okay. For others, for other case, a y bar k has to be less than equals to okay let me put k prime here for all k prime in s1 so therefore at that k if x does not have the label k then x k greater than 0 so therefore the one of the uh, inequalities has to be tight therefore a y k has to be 1 for other these things a y bar k prime must be less than equals to 1 by y transpose 1 this is all coming from this thing. So, this implies k is best response to y bar. Okay. So, if k is in T 1 okay, then let us look at the next thing further for k is not in T 1 x does have label k okay then by the previous lemma what we have is that a label cannot appear twice in fully labeled pair which implies that y does not have label k implies k is not best 
multiply to y bar. So, this proves that for all k in P1 you have this uh, best response condition okay. and if k is not in T1 then k cannot be best supplied to y bar. So, this is there. Okay. Therefore, x bar y bar is going to be Nash equilibrium. So, here I have removed, I have not done certain details, but which can be finished by yourself. Okay, let us look at the converse. Suppose x bar y bar, the corresponding normalized one is Nash. So, this immediately implies S1 minus support of x union support of y is contained in label of x. This is all coming from the definition and S2 minus support of y union support of x is contained in Ly. So, therefore, Lx union Ly when you take it this is going to be simply S1 union S2 that is saying that they are fully labeled. So, this proves the theorem. Okay. So, the essence of this theorem is that the extreme points of this polytope P1 cross P2, okay, the extreme points which are different from origin, they are exactly the Nash equilibrium. So, this is exactly what one uses in proving the um, providing an algorithm for computing Nash equilibrium. So, let me go to this thing. So, let, now we come to the Lemke Hausen algorithm. Okay. So, the idea is start from origin. So, so this is fully labeled and from origin we go to what we do is that pivot alternatingly in P1 and P2 okay, until a completely labeled pair is found. Okay. Starting from origin, you go to the next extreme point which is connected by connected to 0, 0 and then you go on and look for the completely labeled pair. Okay. So, this is basically the idea here. Okay. So, let us uh, introduce few notations for this. So, let me call V1 is nothing but the extreme set of extreme points. of P1 and similarly V2 is set of extreme points of P2 okay. and then E i is basically set of edges between edges and extreme points. So, what it means is that E1 is nothing but x x prime in V1 cross V1 such that the Lx, the intersection of these labels of x and x prime must be exactly m minus 1, the size of this. So, that means the labels of Lx and labels of Lx prime there is only one difference. Okay. Then E2 is going to be y y prime in V2 cross V2 such that the labels of y intersection labels of y prime they must be n minus 1. So, this is the sum notation that we require and 
in fact for some more notation needed V is equals to V1 cross V2 then E is nothing but the following thing X comma Y X prime Y belongs to V cross V such that X X prime is an E1 union X Y X Y prime in V cross V such that Y Y prime is in E2. So, what we are saying that one in this uh, first thing the Y in the second polytope is fixed and x to x prime you are changing it. So, you are only changing in the polytope 1 and in the second thing you are going to you are essentially pivoting between in the second polytope x is fixed here y is changed here y and y prime comes. Okay. So, the whole idea here is that if we, re we restrict our attention to extreme points that are almost fully labeled with the possible exception of particular label i then there is always a unique way in which we can proceed. So, for this uh, let me introduce uh, again another notation let us take a label i from S1 union S2 let V i so is nothing but x comma y in V such that L x union L y is contained in is it, it, uh, it contains S1 union S2 minus i except i all other labels will be there in Lx union Ly and Ei is going to be the edges here E intersection Vi cross Vi. Okay. So, once you set up this notation, so the final theorem is basically the following thing. Let i is a label, then this V i contains 0 0. So, origin is always there as well as every x y in V such that corresponding normalized this thing is Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, that means this V i whatever uh, we have defined here this contains origin as well as the set of Nash equilibria that is the first thing. Then assuming non-degeneracy that uh, actually we made it as a blanket assumption. So, we are assuming this thing uh, this is a non-degeneracy is automatically made to us then 0 0 and the elements of V i corresponding to an equilibrium have degree 1 in the graph V i E i and all other nodes in V i have degree 2. So, what it is saying is that 0 0 has only one neighbor. Okay. So, from 0 0 I can go to one only one other neighbor. Okay. And Similarly, the equilibrium if the, uh, the point x y is corresponding to an equilibrium Nash equilibrium then that also has a degree 1 that means from there you can only go to one other node. And if it is not a Nash equilibrium then uh, for other, all other nodes have degree 2 that means they have at least 2 paths. Okay. So, let us try to prove this. Okay. So, the first part is obvious. 
So, 0, 0 and uh, all pairs corresponding to Nash equilibrium are fully labeled. Therefore, first part is obvious. So, we only need to do the second part. So, for the second part, consider x comma y in v i and let x bar y bar is the corresponding normalized strategies. Okay. So, because x y these are all x uh, extreme points that we said we already proved in the previous one of the previous lemma we have this size of L x is m. Similarly, the size of L y is n. So, this we already have proved it. So, so if x y is equal to 0 0 or x bar y bar is Nash equilibrium, then x y is fully labeled and L x intersection L y is going to be empty set. So, this is uh, if this happens. So, let us uh, look, look for that. The neighbors of x y are those elements in v i that replace i with some other label correct because they are the neighbors. So, therefore, one of the label is going to be replaced. So, that uh, the, the elements in the v i that replace i with some other label. So, basically those where other constraints holds with equality instead instead of one corresponding to i okay now since only x r y has a label i only one of them either x will have i label or y will have li label but not both oh, we may only replace is it from one of them. So, dropping the the label i we obtain a new label and by non degeneracy this label is going to be unique. So, you should see that why this non degeneracy is a very very crucial here. So, because of the non degeneracy only when you are dropping this label i you will be able to get only one another label only ok. There cannot be multiple this thing ok. So, what happens otherwise what happens is the following thing. If L x intersection L y is j for some duplicate label j in S 1 union S 2, then the neighbors of 
x y are obtained by replacing j with another label. This replacement can be done either in P1 or in P2 and for each of them there is exactly one neighbor by the same reasoning as before. Good. So, this proves this theorem. So, the essence of this theorem is that this these points here okay, in this V i okay, um, let us go here. So, if you take first thing is V i contains origin and uh, all the points corresponding to Nash equilibrium and then under the degeneracy 0 0 and the elements of V i correspond to any equilibrium have degree 1 and other nodes have degree 2. So, this is the this is basically the next uh, point in fact, this is the crucial to the Lemke Hausen algorithm. So, let us. So, now what we have shown is that this graph V i for each i in S 1 union S 2 consists of paths and cycles that are pairwise disjoint and the ends of paths correspond to the pair of one is origin and to the equilibrium of the underlying game. So, because of this degree 2 and the this degree 1, so either they are cycling or the ends of the paths will be either 0 0 or they must correspond, they must end at an equilibrium of the underlying game. So, this is this is essentially the Lemke Hausen algorithm. So, in the Lemke Hausen algorithm essentially starts with 0 0 and it looks for a path. So, from 0 0 you can go to another along this graph which we have introduced and then at some point of time it will stop because it cannot move any further because that is the the degree 1, one once you reach a degree 1 point then you end with that and that is giving you a Nash equilibrium. In fact, this also provides you a proof of existence of a Nash equilibrium. So, uh, this is uh, the very important algorithm for solving biomatrix schemes. And in fact, uh, in the I plan to actually upload some video where we will work out uh, an example to see how this algorithm works and all. So, that will be like a supplementary video to this uh, video where I will tell you how to put everything in a for in a concrete example. And there is another thing is that this uh, algorithm is belongs to the class of uh, path following algorithms or homotopy based algorithms. So, which is a this is a very important algorithm in for computing the Nash equilibrium of biometric schemes. In the worst case this algorithm can also take exponentially many steps. Okay. Okay. So, with this uh, we will conclude this session and in the next session we will start looking at evolutionary stability. Thank you all.